What is going on, everybody? This is Greg. Um, I decided to switch it up a little bit and do something I've never done before. Um, we're going to do my mental health write-up as a video. Um, so, like all the rest of us, we went to the um, psych floor, and I had the opportunity to uh, be involved with some patients that were on the general psych unit. Um, and specifically that I wanted, the one that I wanted to do was, um, we're going to name him MT. Um, he was a 28 year old male. Um, he actually was committed for, um, he or he voluntarily came into the police department. Uh, he was homeless. Um, <clears throat> he was found wandering the streets. Um, he then got put in on a involuntary um, hold um, and pretty much has been there ever since. Um, so I think when I uh, got there, he was on like 280 some odd days of, of being on that floor. Um, he is has a history of uh, schizophrenia, anxiety, um, history of alcohol and cannabis uh, use disorder. Um, not really sure how much the cannabis actually gets involved in that, but hey, that's what's on the, uh, the medical chart. Um, <clears throat> so schizophrenia um, has a lot of different things and it has a lot of different grades that can kind of go with it from very mild to very extreme. Um, and in his case, uh, his illness, unfortunately, was pretty extreme. Um, he thought that there were uh, government agencies that uh, were trying to control his mind. Um, he actually stated a couple days before we got there that a bug crawled up his anus and was making its way to his brain. Um, so it, it's very, it was very difficult for him to um, get out of those delusions, I guess you could say. Um, <clears throat> the big thing was really the for him was the the government agency controls and that that they were trying to control his brain and um, one of the things that I actually found relatively interesting um, when we we were paired in twos and so I was kind of just observing from afar and one of the other uh, students that was with us really didn't have any issue communicating with him um, and when I tried to communicate with him, he really had no interest in talking to me. Um, he asked me three different times, who do I work for? And um, I'm assuming in his brain, since I'm such a strapping, good-looking man, um, <laughs> in all honesty, um, it's more of, I, I guess, maybe I come off as more of a government-looking um, official, I guess. Um, so he really did not want to talk to me very much, um, which I found very interesting, whereas she was able to really connect with him more on a personal level. Um, so a lot of the information that I gathered, I actually gathered from her. Um, there were some instances where I was able to talk to him, and um, but I just, I just found him kind of really so interesting that I, I had, to, had to bring him up. Um, <clears throat> really the biggest things for him are, are the delusions um, that the government is is trying to control his brain um, that there's a worm that's trying to get into his brain um, he also stated at one point that he a year and a half ago his mother died um, and <clears throat> the it was from a brain tumor I'm wondering if that had any trigger to what was actually being caused, uh, causing him to think that something was crawling into his brain. I'm not not really 100% sure, um, but he said, from what it, what I was able to gather, uh, ever since then it's kind of been way downhill. Um, he's been and out of multiple different facilities, and it kind of seems to me like this, unless they find him a full time uh, facility. Uh, he's not going to really be able to go anywhere, um, which is uh, unfortunately is kind of sad. Um, <clears throat> the uh, th the biggest thing with him is it's it's almost nearly impossible for him to see reality. There was no there was there was no right and wrong in terms of his reality. What he thought was 
uh, the, that the government was trying to control him was his reality. There was nothing else, and nobody could sway him of that. Um, one example of it is we were doing a, 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 a group, uh, group session, and one of the things was just to make a goal for today. Uh, his goal was that he wanted a full body scan so that way they, he could find where the worm is. Um, other patients were much more able to kind of see uh, the difference between reality and their delusions, but he never really was able to. Um, it sounded a lot like he really wasn't very medication compliant, um, and really no matter what they do, it was more of just a continue to observe, keep him safe, things like that. Um, the the big thing with him is, uh, and like I said in the beginning, I'm not really sure how uh, marijuana could affect this. Um, I, alcohol, sure, I, I can see that. Um, I haven't done enough research on, on marijuana to really see uh, how it could trigger this in, in a, a person that is has got schizophrenia. I, I'm really not 100% sure. Um, <clears throat> he did say uh, that he thought the the death of his mother, um, he thought it was a government uh, conspiracy. Uh, he thought the government took her away from him. And he planned on to get into every branch of the, of the U.S. military so that way he could find her. Um, so there's got to be some traumatic experience that went along with that. Um, he also said that his brother uh, also suffers a little bit from mental illness. Um, wasn't very specific on what it was, uh, but uh, there was definitely some sort of family component that went along with it. Um, <clears throat> the, the resources I think that he really needs, um, he needs a long-term care facility. Um, I don't know how they're going to be able to to get him to see reality. Um, it's going to take a lot of therapy, a lot of ongoing uh, counseling, um, if they're even able to get him to do that, um, which would be very difficult. Um, and he doesn't have any money, so <laughs> he can't. He doesn't work. Uh, has has no money. Um, so th this is going to be a, one of those situations where he's going to have to get put into a facility that's you know completely covered by you know, Medicare and Medicaid, uh, which we all know that those facilities are not not the best. Um, he did have one interesting coping strategy. Um, while we were there, we got up there at about 7:30 and. Um, Pretty much from the time I was there to the time I left, other than when they were um, eating meals or doing you know, group sessions or whatnot, he was pacing the halls. Um, and I talked to one of the nurses that I was shadowing. He said that pretty much he walks from the time he gets up to the time he goes to bed. And um, so I asked him, what, why does he walk? And he said that the voices in his head tell him to walk, so he walks. Um, I, I guess it's, he also tried to say that it helps keep him in shape, and he's trying to get into the best shape that he can, um, I guess for his military uh, expedition. But um, I, I just found that, that really interesting. He, very, no issues in terms of, um, personality, he wasn't aggressive or anything like that, very calm. Um, you could tell that there was a protector uh, type attitude with him. Um, you know, if somebody got a little out of line, he would, he would help jump in if there was an issue. And um, so there was definitely that. But uh, from what I could tell, uh, just because I, I was just trying to see how much he walks, it, from how long it takes him, he and the distance he walks about 23 miles a day um so that's that's pretty significant um it's it's definitely a coping strategy um 
the the treatment for him, unfortunately, I don't think that they're going to be able to really crack him. Um, the this is I think this is their setup more for a get in, get healthy, get out. Uh, they're not really set up for a long term long term care. Uh, maybe they maybe they are and. Um, I, I just didn't really see it, but I, I think he is going to be institutionalized probably for the rest of his life. Um, <clears throat> if they have not gotten him to work with medications over the last, say, you know, he, he's been there for over 280 days, and there's still no signs of differentiation between reality and delusion, uh, it's, they're going to need something significant. Um, <clears throat> The, the tough thing with him is he is going to, he's not going to be able to function in society. Uh, I, I don't, I, I don't really ever see that happening for him, uh, which is unfortunate because he, he was a very, very nice guy. You could tell he was relatively intelligent. Um, it just could not figure out what was going on in his head. Um, <clears throat> The, the only thing that I would suggest for him um, is trying to see if they can find a long-term care facility for him. Um, the, where he is, it's, it's going to be a revolving door, and he's kind of stuck where he is. He needs to be able to find a place where he might have a little bit of better resources, uh, maybe a gym or you know, something where they, it, he can be outside or, or, or whatnot, um, so that way he f- can – can maybe start feeling a little bit better about himself and um maybe something will 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 click there Uh, i'm really not sure um but overall it it was a really cool experience being able to go um the just to be able to see the different types of of people there and how he interact with everyone and just the difference between how he, uh, he reacted with me versus how he reacts to, uh, you know, a female, uh, that was, does not have a, uh, you know, maybe a military type look to them. Um, I, I've obviously gotten that before that I, <laughs> I look like a little bit of a military look, but, um, you know, it, in his circumstances, that was the thing that almost kind of is a trigger for him. Um, and if you are afraid of the that the government did something to your brain, you're going to be a little bit afraid and hesitant to somebody that looks uh, like like a military type person. So uh, overall, it was a great experience. I would definitely do it again. Um, I actually said that I would float up there for sure if I were to not go to the emergency department. Um, it, it just seemed like a really cool thing, and uh, being able to interact with people is, is why I got into nursing. And uh, So uh, it, was, it was a cool experience, and uh, hopefully this, this video, my first one, is, uh, is okay, and uh, I, I covered everything that we needed. Uh, have a great rest of your day, and uh, thanks for a cool experience.